What's up guys, Paul from the Sysadmin channel bringing you the best tips and tools for your Sysadmin journey. In this video, we're going to continue where we left off and create our function to save the output from the new user creation script into our SQL database automatically. Uh, we're going to name this script save user creation to SQL database. This is the sixth video in our build a web app with PowerShell and PHP series. So be sure to check out the others if you haven't done so already. All right, with that all said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is open up Windows Explorer and navigate to our eDrive since that's where our project folder is at. We'll go ahead and go into Web Tool and then PowerShell. And then from there, we'll open up Web Tool folder and then we'll open up the webtool.psm1 file, which is our Web Tool module that we created last video. All right, in our last video, we used the PowerShell template to create the new user creation script but I thought it would be helpful to put those newly learned skills to the test and create a function from scratch. So we'll start off by declaring a function and naming it to save user creation to SQL database, along with the opening, opening and closing curly brackets. The only thing I'm going to copy and paste is the comment base help just to save us some time. All right. So once we have that done, we'll go ahead and start off by setting the commandlet binding attribute. Uh, this attribute will now make our function a PowerShell advanced function. And this gives us the ability to use the dash verbose, the dash error action, uh, the debug parameters, so on and so forth. Uh, so you now have the ability to use those in this function. All right, next up, we're going to set up our param block. Um, so we'll start off by setting param and then the open and closing parentheses. And within there, we're going to set our parameters. This will allow us to customize the parameters we want to use. Since we're only going to allow this function to receive input from our new user creation function, we're only going to set one parameter. We want to set the mandatory attribute to false. That way it doesn't prompt us to specify any input. We also want to set the value from pipeline and value from pipeline by property name. We're going to set that to true. This is the attribute that allows for pipeline input. So we want to make sure that that is set correctly. Finally, another important item we have to set is the data type. Since we're going to be using the pipeline, the data type we're going to be receiving is a PS custom object. So we need to make sure that the data type is set to object. If you put a string or array in there, it's going to have issues. So we want to make sure that we set that correctly. Okay. Like I said, we only need one input here for this function. So we're pretty much done with our parameters. With every function I create, I always like to use the begin, process, and end block because I like the structure and the look. So we'll go ahead and add that now. Within our begin block, we're going to want to grab the date so we know when the entry was run. And it can also be used as a logging system, so it's a good use of the system. We're also going to want to make a connection to our SQL database to make sure that we can talk back and forth with it. Um, I've set up this hash table before, so no need to spend too much time on it. All right, moving on to the process block, we're going to set up a try catch block inside of a for each loop. And inside that try catch block, we're going to run another check query to make sure that the employee ID does not match any existing IDs in our database. And we've set up something similar before where our query is going to be select everything from our web tool table where employee ID is equal to an employee ID in our database. We've also set up something similar where we query the database using invoke SQL CMD to see if there was a match. So we'll go ahead and set that up now. If our invoke SQL CMD query produced a result, then we'll want to write a verbose message saying the employee ID is matched with the user that was matched with the query. If there was not a match, then let's write a message saying we're adding the user along with the employee ID to be processed. This way, when someone submits a form with a new user, they'll get some immediate feedback on the web page. All right, so now for the bread and butter of this video. Uh, next up, we're going to write our SQL query to insert all this data into our database table. Since we have 10 columns in our table, we need to make sure that we have 10 values as well. It can get a bit tricky, so I like to lay it out as neat as I can so it's less confusing. We'll keep everything in a variable inside double quotes, but the syntax to insert into the table is insert into and the con table as a sub expression on the line underneath that. I'm going to open up the parentheses and start with the first name on the next line. I'm going to put a comma underneath the parentheses. So it's laid out and looking pretty. Uh, that's going to be the column for our last name. 
will follow suit on the structure and set the next item to full name. Uh, below that, we're going to be setting the username. Underneath the username, we're going to want to set the email address. Next up is the employee ID, manager email, initiated by, date. And for the last item, we're going to set it to processed. And then we're going to close off the parentheses and indent all of this. Every column needs a value. So after the process columns, we'll start a new line and we're going to write the values keyword and open another set of parentheses. Inside that, we're going to specify the user dot first name as a sub expression and make sure that all of that is encapsulated inside single quotes. On the next line, we'll start off with a comma and pretty much do the same thing. Uh, this time, instead of the first name, we'll go ahead and set it to last name. Our next values are pretty much going to be the exact same thing. So I'm going to copy this and paste it six more times. We've already set the first and last name. So on the third line, let's go ahead and change that last name to full name. And then right after that, we'll go ahead and set the value to username, email address, and then employee ID. Right after that is going to be manager email and then initiated by. At this point, we have 10 columns and only eight values. So we need to make sure that we add the date. So instead of the user dot whatever, um, we'll just add a dollar sign date. Okay, and finally for our last value, we'll add another comma. And since this value is going to be for our processed column, we actually want to hard code the value to zero. Um, that way it automatically sets it to false. And don't forget to close off the parentheses too, or else you'll run into errors. Okay, so we've finished our insert into query. So let's make sure that the columns match the values we specified in the order that we specified them to. So we can see here that I got first name, last name, full name, username, email address, employee ID, manager email, initiated by date, and the process is set to zero. Okay, that looks good. Uh, now we actually want to insert the data into SQL. So we'll use another invoke SQL CMD command and pretty much uh, do the same thing we did the last time. Uh, but this time we'll specify the query variable uh, that we just set up right now. We're also going to want to set the error action to stop if there's any terminating errors. All right, so assuming there wasn't any errors here, I want to actually validate and see that the data was inserted correctly. So to do this, I'm going to rerun the check query that we set up in the beginning of the video. And if everything was set up successfully, we should get a result. If you don't get an output here, then something must be wrong and you'll need to dig deeper to see what's actually happening. For our output, I'm going to exclude the ID and processed columns because we're going to display this to the users so they can see uh, their values as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is convert the SQL output variable to HTML by using the convert to HTML commandlet. Uh, this will automatically create the table rows and make everything look pretty for the user inserting the data to the form. All right, and finally in our catch block, we'll go ahead and write a verbose message with the error that was found in the try block if there was any. All right, so I think we're just about done with the creation of our script to automatically save the data to our SQL database. Um, so let's, uh, let's move on. Actually, let me change this convert to HTML to dash fragment. And this is so it only uses the core data that we need. So no, no need to get the rest of that stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and open up PowerShell to do some more testing. Uh, this time when we run the script, we should see a verbose message and the tables that were created using the convert to HTML commandlet. And if I dump all of the data from the database again, we can see that the king of the north is listed there and it looks great. But there's actually one other thing to fix. If we run the form now, we're only getting a message saying, hello, PowerShell. So with our new user creation script and our save to SQL database script finish, let's go back into our index.php file and change the shell exec to run this command. There are multiple ways of mixing PowerShell code and PHP code in the same line. Uh, sometimes it's great to concatenate the strings 
But in this case, since we're not PHP experts, I found the absolute easiest way is to escape another set of double quotes. To do that, we'll add a backslash before each double quote we want to escape. And from there, we can pretty much write our statement the same way we do in PowerShell. Uh, you'll also notice that the variables are, are a different color. So that lets me know that PHP is reading them as PHP variables. All right, so with that now set, let's go back into our PHP form and go ahead and test this out. So as a first name, I'm going to set uh, Luke. For the last name, we'll go ahead and set it to Skywalker. The employee ID is going to be E379. The manager email is going to be Gabby at the sysadminchannel.com. And the initiated by is hardcoded to me at the sysadminchannel.com for the moment. So there is nothing to change there. So let's see what happens when we hit submit. All right, sweet. We're actually getting data back to our web application and the information looks to be spot on. All right, guys, this is Paul with the sysadmin channel signing out.